How long, Lord, will this continue on the earth before uh, you move, Lord? Hebrews 12.1 Therefore, seeing we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. God is talking to you and me about the Christian life, and he compares it to an endurance race, a long-distance race, you know. And he says, run with endurance the race. And uh, life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And God says, I want you to run with endurance the race. But he says, he says, therefore, there it is again. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses, we have a lot of witnesses as we run this race. And uh, a lot of spectators as we run the race. Well, who are these spectators? Therefore is an important word, and it is therefore for a reason. And it is the beginning of, of Hebrews chapter 12. It is verse 1. So therefore, to find out what it is therefore, you got to go back. And chapter 11 is the Faith Hall of Fame. It talks about the champions of faith. It talks about Abraham. It talks about Moses. It talks about uh, David. It talks about Joshua. It talks about the champions of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And then he turns to you and me in chapter 12 and says, Therefore, seeing we, are, we, are, we have such a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And uh, what does that tell us? You know what I think it tells us? I think it tells us that those who've gone on to glory, they still are, have an awareness of what's going on here and God lets them see us on Sunday morning and, and, and they're cheering us on whether it be Sunday morning or whatever and, and he lets them see some things here on the earth and uh, they are our cheering section and uh, wow what an amazing thing the Faith Hall of Famers uh, and uh, all those who've gone before us well maybe you're thinking Boy, that's, well, let me show you Luke 15, verse 10. Jesus said this, In the same way I tell you, Jesus said, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Listen, the Bible says there's joy in heaven when one person says, you know what, I'm a sinner, and you know what, there is a penalty on my sin, and you know, I, I, I believe Jesus paid it on the cross, and I turn to Christ and trust Him as my Savior. The Bible says there's a party in heaven when that happens. Now, that tells me that people in heaven know what's going on here. Right? And I don't think you have to have a Ph.D. to figure that out, do you? I mean, they got to know what's going on if that, you know. And, uh, and so, here's what I'm saying. The believer who passes on they're not in some sleep. Oh, not at all. Not at all. I had somebody ask me that last Sunday after the service. said, Pastor, are you going to... I think my loved one is sleeping in the grave or something. And, and I said, no, you need to come next Sunday. No, that is not so at all. The Bible says they've gone on to be with the Lord. The Bible says that we may not know what's going on in heaven, but heaven knows what's going on here. And a lot more than we realize. Now, God may not let them know everything that's going on here, but they know a whole lot about what's going on here. Um, in Matthew 14, it tells us of the death of John the Baptist. And it says, after the John, John the Baptist died, his disciples came and took away his body and buried it. Did they bury John? No. No, the Bible doesn't say they buried John the Baptist. No, 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 they buried his body. Death only touches the body, not the person. He lives on with no break in his continuity of thinking. 
He still remembers, just as those martyrs remember all the things that took place on this earth and cry out to God for God to move on their behalf. They still know. There's still an awareness. You see, Jesus said, He who believes in me will live even if he dies. My dad died. Does that mean he's in the grave somewhere? Oh, no. That's his earthly body. He lives even if he dies. He is, li- he is living. He is with the Lord right now. When we were planning this building, we spent, you know, a lot of hours working on that. And One day I drove across town to the architect and went in and to get his latest ideas, you know. And that day I sat down and he said, well, he said, Pastor Carl, you know this uh, spire that you got on that first building, that old building over there? He said, I'm thinking about maybe we ought to take that and put it over there, put it on the atrium over on the entrance on the new building. And I just sort of looked at him for a minute. He said, is that a bad idea? And I said, no. I said, I, I can't believe that you would do you would think of that? I, I can't believe that. I, I, I'm amazed. Why is that, Carl? Well, I tell you, because that spire that we put up back there in 1979, I think it was, uh, my dad, being a plumber, <laughs> took some pipe and made that cross that's on top of it. He made that cross. And I still remember, a con- you know how you remember some conversations from years ago? You know, they just stand out in your mind. And I remember one day my dad said to me, uh, we were talking about that spire and the cross, and my dad said, you don't like it, do you? I said, Dad, I never said that. He said, well, you never said you liked it. (laughs) And I didn't. He was right, I guess, you know. But now the architect is saying, let's move that spire and put it over on the new building. And uh, the spire with the cross on top and, and when he said it, I, I, I was just, and I thought, oh, my lands, my dad would love that. And so many times I thought, I wish I could walk him up in front of this building and say, look, Dad, you remember that cross you made? It's up there. We put it over on the new building. See, I did like it, Dad. And so many times I've looked at that and kind of regretted that, oh, I wish he was here. And I thought that even last Sunday. Man, I wish mom and dad were here to see it, you know, because this church started in their living room, you know, and and they would love to. But I want to tell you something. I believe with all my heart they see it. And you may think, oh, Pastor Carl's crazy. That's okay. Join the club. You have to get in line. Take a number. But I want you to know I believe that God allows these who've gone on to know some things that are going on here in this world. I believe the scripture indicates that. You bury bodies. You do not bury people. They are more alive today. And they are very conscious and very much alive. They are in fellowship. And uh, I have had many, many funerals but I've never buried a person, never. I have buried bodies. And I know sometimes people say, well, you know, mother's out there in the grave, and sometimes I go and talk to her, and I I, I understand kind of where you're coming from, but I, I want you to know that's not so. It's really not so. Mother's body is there, but that's not mother. These are just the earthly containers we live in, you know. And uh, that reminds me of the guy that was doing his first, first funeral. Young pastor was doing his first funeral, and he was trying to explain that. He was trying to say to people, you know, that this is just a shell. And the casket was there, and he said, folks, this is just a shell. The nut is gone. 